All right, Coach Moore. So uh, it's been a rough 48 hours for everybody I've been talking to today. Obviously, you're not the only one. Um, talk to, you know, three other MAC coaches, yourself, uh, Coach Stutzman, Andersey, and Joel Greenlee, Colin Moore, Zach Carson today. I'm going to talk to Cheek tomorrow. You're a guy, you're a qualifier. Okay. But, you know, uh, a lot to digest here in, um, in your guys' lives. Um, obviously, you know, when, when did you get the news, by the way, and where were you guys? Uh, I mean, I was, I was actually out of town on uh, Thursday. I was uh, over in Pennsylvania visiting some family, and I was following some of the stuff that was going on uh, on my phone a little bit and texting with uh, Coach Boomer. And, you know, you, you could kind of see how things were developing along the way with other sports, and you just saw it coming down the line. Um, I think we were all hoping that, you know, they, they wouldn't do that to us, but um, – it was in the afternoon sometime on Thursday. Uh, they, they pulled the plug. And uh, before that, I think at, uh, we had a meeting at 11 that uh, Boomer and Coach Muster went to. And they basically said, hey, we can't keep anybody on campus at this point except for Evan and a few workout partners. So at that point, we were trying to figure out who was going to stay around to work out with Evan for the next three or four days before we took off. Um, but then, you know, a few hours later, it didn't matter anymore. So, you know, uh, most of the coaches I've talked to, everybody I've talked to, we fought World War II with no interruption of the NCAA tournament of, of the basketball. And, you know, it, it was crazy. They're, they're canceling the Final Four. And as one of the coaches stated yesterday, a lot of that money trickles down, whether it's MAC tournament money, whether it's – NCAA money, all that money, you know, basketball runs a lot of what's going on. Basketball and football are the big revenue sports, right? Yep. They've, exactly. never, they've never, it's unprecedented, right? And now your championships are canceled. Um, what do you think that says for the, the, the severity of the situation, the seriousness of, of what we got going on here and the, and the potential risk to human life? I, I mean, I think it, I think everybody just being precautious. I mean, I'm sure everybody you talk to is, feeling the same way i mean um when you're talking about human lives i guess everybody kind of um thinks a little harder and and uh you know looks at the bigger picture hopefully um i'm sure you know uh, i'd say 90 percent of the people out there i'm sure are agreeing that this is an overreaction um you know it's really not going to be that bad but uh, i guess until it fully hits the United States and hits this area and totally comes around. I guess everybody's kind of just waiting to see what's going to happen. So instead of waiting to see, you know, um, people want to do something. And I guess I probably think I was, had my son at the ER yesterday. He fell down and has had to get some stitches and the doctor even said the same thing. He's like, Hey, we're in a, we're in a have to do something society. Um, we can't sit around and, and wait for bad things to occur. We have to try to be proactive, and that's exactly what's going on. Uh, you know, where were you for nine eleven? You were at Penn State. What year were you? Freshman, yeah, or sophomore. Was, sophomore. Uh, I was uh, two thousand one. Junior. Yeah, I think it was in my um, sophomore year. Sophomore year. Yeah, I, I remember I was in uh, one of my classes uh, in the morning time. One of one of the cooler professors I had down there. And uh, Mr. Texador, he's kind of like, oh, you know, he, we were talking about the the first uh, plane that hit. And then I think when we were in class, another one hit. And then, boom, we were out of class. That whole thing so. was crazy. But, you know, like, here's the thing about this. You know, even if you look at World War II, Pearl Harbor, you look at 9-11, you know, Manhattan, D.C., and then, you know, uh, Pennsylvania. That was an enemy combatant uh, attacking us, whereas now, you know, it's it's – it's an illness, a respiratory illness. With um, and the biggest risk is obviously not your guys. Your guys are not the risk. You're not at risk. Clint, Boomer, Evan, Cheek. That's not who's at risk. Who's at risk is right. your parents, my parents. You know what I mean? And and I think that's like you're saying when we talk precautions. Um, what do you say to Evan Cheek? You know, and and, and like how did you address him? And 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 you know, you have one guy qualified, and it's his fifth year. 
what do you say to that guy? You know, I talked to two fifth year guys today in Zach Carson and Colin Moore. What do you mm-hmm. say to him? I mean, it's it's hard to sit there and uh, I guess tell him everything's going to be okay. I mean, I, I think he's a smart enough kid, and all all these kids were following social media and following this stuff the whole last three four weeks. So they, you know, it had to be in the back of their minds. Um, I'm sure they were worried about it. Um, but when it actually happened, I, like I said, I wasn't even around. Um, so I didn't get to address our team face to face. I had to send a group text out, just kind of let people know, Hey, sometimes, you know, things don't work out the way you dream of and hope for. And, um, uh, you know, but with any situation, it's all about making the best of it. And, you know, we got a really good group of guys. We had, like you said, we had one guy qualify, but we had basically everyone uh, was still back on campus training to help Evan out and to, you know, to better themselves and, and to do it as a team. And that was our whole motto this year, was just doing doing things as a team and moving everybody forward and um, developing everybody. And I, th- I think, you know, hopefully people definitely saw the improvements we had throughout the season, just doing it as a team. But, um, you know, our, our, a lot of our guys, I think, got behind Evan. Um, he's been a leader for us. He's uh, really helped this program as a whole coming from when he was a freshman to where we're at now. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. Hopefully he can take away from this, just the impact he's had on a program like Cleveland state and, um, you know, set the standard for, for the upcoming years. And I don't, I don't know if he really knows what he wants to do um, the next stage of his life. I, I think he's has enough experience in wrestling and is a, is a good enough person to uh, become a coach. And, you know, I think everybody's telling him, Hey, you need to stay in the sport and uh, develop others and be a leader. And, and, um, you know, I guess just kind of do, do what you love. And he, he definitely loves the sport. So we're looking forward to, you know, talking with him and hopefully helping him figure out the next stages of his, his life after, after this. Okay. The, the spring athletes and um, NCA are going to get another year. They're going to give the, the spring athletes another year is, is what it looks like. Um, you guys did 95% of your season. Right. If it comes down to that, you know, how do you feel about giving these guys a sixth year? Did we wrestle too much? I mean, some of the guys are like, I don't even know if I'm going to come back. Right. Like that's crazy to me. Right. But your body takes it. It, it takes a toll on your body. Division one college wrestling is the hardest thing you can do. If you go look at mixed martial arts, that should tell you it's the hardest thing to do. Cause look who dominates a lot of the, at one point or another, look at every weight division in the UFC. It's been a division one guy. I mean, yeah. you have a Cleveland state guy who made the NCAA tournament for you. Who's the toughest man on the planet. Stipe Miocic, you know yep. what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think that that's right there. It's, it's, it's a, it shows how you're growing them there. You know what I mean? Like, but you know, the, the, the sixth year, man, this, you know, and then if you're, you're gross and uh, Sebastian, you know, those guys have come up to me, you know, like they've come up in my mind every time Sebastian, I want to say has two degrees going on three, right? Like <laughs> Colin Moore's got two degrees going on, you know, he would have to go on a third degree, right? Like, he has a master's degree. That's what is he? He's finishing it right now. What do you do for these guys with six years? What do you do with nine point nine scholarships if you have full, fully funded? You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I, I always like the idea of giving giving them another year. Uh, I mean, if they're if, if they can, I guess we could find a. I don't know if there's a fair way to allow these kids to come back, and as long as they're in school, advancing their academic uh, careers, then I don't see why that's a problem. I mean, I guess, you know, talking with a lot of people, I think, I guess if you do put it that way, you know, we, we did at least got to wrestle through our conference tournament the whole year through the conference tournament, but you know, the national term is just, uh, it's just different, you know? And I think if you look at a lot of the, you know, a lot of the coaches out there, including myself, I don't know if I'd be in the position I'm in today if I didn't get to wrestle my senior year, you know, a lot, a lot is, can be gained through going there and having a good tournament and opening up eyes as far as seeing coaches that say, Hey, I'm going to take a chance on him and bring him on board and let him coach with me and, and see how he does. So I, I think that's what maybe Evan is holding Evan back a little bit. Like I think he really wants to get into coaching and 
you know, if he, if he goes to uh, Minneapolis and he becomes an All-American, his options open up a lot more. Um, sad to say that. I mean, he's a great he's a great person. He, he'll work hard. I mean, he'll do what you ask him to do. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's about having those credentials and, uh, you know, being able to prove yourself at that level um, opens a lot of doors. So I, I don't know what to think. I don't know. If, I don't know. If, you know, I don't, I don't see them giving the, these guys another year. Um, I'd be certainly okay with it. I'd, I'd hope we could talk cheek into coming back for another year. And um, I'm sure he could handle it. He's a, he's a tough kid. I mean, he's um, been doing it this long and I think his, his passion for the sport will, will continue. Every person I've talked to so far is, uh, you know, Joel talking to Joel, Joel, Joel's like, I'm like, hey man, when can I call you? Or when can I call you back? He's like, anytime. I don't have anything to do, <laughs> right? Like Stutzman was picking his yeah. head up, but Zach Carson yeah. and Colin Moore today were like, yeah, we don't got anything to do. I don't have anything going on. You know, Colin Moore's got the Olympic trials coming up. We don't know when, right? It just got postponed. But right. have you ever been like this, Josh, in a situation where I, I don't know what to do with myself right now? And I know you got three boys and you're an active father, but like. Have you ever been in this situation? I can't remember a time, no. I mean, maybe maybe after my senior year of college, uh, finishing up, trying to figure out where what I was going to do when I was graduating. Um, I think there was some downtime, just kind of <laughs> hanging out and, and seeing what, what was going to happen next. And I think this is very similar. I mean, we know, you know, three or four weeks from now everything will I think be back somewhat back to normal we'll be back in the room we'll be back recruiting I mean but the the dead period right now and just the standstill is kind of I don't know it's boring you know <laughs> you just, yeah I guess you just this it's it's you know like when when you're a wrestling coach you want to go to wrestling tournaments you want to go recruit you want to go I mean I was excited to go down to the Olympic trials in, in a couple weeks um uh, so I guess we just gotta we gotta figure out what's next, and uh, there's still obviously plenty of uh, planning to do, trying to make our schedule for next year, trying to figure out uh, what kids maybe we're gonna bring on campus once we're allowed to. Uh, talking to some of the seniors that did visit that we're trying to get to commit. So there's still there's still work being done, but we really can't go anywhere. We're just hanging out. It's all so, on your phone. Everything um, you can do is on your phone. Literally, right? That's, yep. It's text yep. and phone calls, isn't it? That's it. No training guys, no in-person visits. It's like literally what we're doing right now is your work for the next however many weeks. April 15th for for a month. Yep. Uh, 31 days. That's insane. And then um, the boys are off school, aren't they? Yeah, my boys will be off school. three. Well, I mean, everybody's off school three weeks. Yeah. Uh, My kid's daycare is is still open. My kid's daycare is still open. but That's good. Yeah, but uh, yeah, after (laughs) Monday – my wife and I, she's at Sullen High School. I'm at Riverside, and it's like we're not – you can't go to school, right? It's wild. It's, it's crazy to think about it. And and I know you got two workaholic uh, assistant coaches in Clint Musser and, and Boomer Fetchko. Like those guys are workers. They're hostlers. So I don't know what those guys are going to do. They're, they might melt down. I don't know what those guys are going to do. Yeah, they'll, they'll figure it out. I don't know. Musser, Musser's uh, moving houses, so he's going to – you know, he'll get to take some time to move into his new house, um, get some things settled. And, uh, you know, it's it's honestly a, a good time to uh, spend with the family. You know, be, going through a wrestling season, you're traveling a lot. You're uh, doing things at nighttime. So uh, it's, it's, it's a good time to hang out with the boys, get some spring cleaning done. Um, you know, it's some good downtime to just kind of be able to, really digest things and think about things you know sometimes the season's going so fast and there's so much going on you know with with everything it's hard to actually sit down and really think um you're just reacting and trying to keep things moving forward but this will be a good time for you know our staff and a lot of other staffs out there just sit down and think and plan and uh you know just figure out figure out where to go next you know, I look at the momentum you guys built this year, and you really had a just a, a fantastic year, man. You won a bunch of MAC duels. Um, you had a bunch of placers at the MAC tournament. 
And obviously this, everybody's getting shot in the foot by this though. But I don't know if anybody's getting shot in the foot more than Cleveland State. Right? You had real momentum going into this. But would you agree? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I thought our guys wrestled about as well as we could at uh, the MAC championships. And we were just excited about the opportunity for Evan Cheek. Uh, but, you know, obviously for us, trying to get trying to get someone on the podium was kind of that next step. Uh, I think it's been 25 years. Dan Carcelli, 1994. Since, yeah, Dan Carcelli. Yep. So we're, we're uh, you know, and I think, honestly, we Evan had a good good shot. I mean, he was, well, it's 36 and 5 on the year. I think he was uh, one of the leaders in the wins. Everybody in the country, he was, you know, in the best shape of his life, wrestling well, very confident. You know, anything can happen, and, and that's the tough part is, uh, you know, who's going to step up for us next, you know, if Evan doesn't get another year back. And this has been – you know, he's a fifth year senior. It's been a long time in the making. Um, and, and I knew when he was a freshman, you know, the first time I wrestled with him, I was, I, I was kind of thinking this kid definitely has the ability to get it done. You know, that not, not everybody does. I mean, you, I mean, obviously you try to make people think that they can, they can get it done, but this Evan, he had the, the work ethic, he had the skills, he had the toughness. Um, and it was going to be exciting to see, how he could get it done. But I mean, I think we're, we're still, you know, obviously proud of him, proud of the guys, proud of our true freshmen that stepped up this year. And that's, uh, that's huge. I mean, we had four freshmen in our lineup most of the year, um, three true freshmen. And, and for us to be, you know, winning matches and, and really we are, we are one match away from beating a couple other Mac teams uh, that, you know, w- would have been nice, would have been even a, a really great season, but I think just our development of our young guys um, and you know the all the changes that we went through in the last last couple of years, I think it's shows some a lot of improvement. Did you beat Kent State and did you beat Edinburgh? That, that's what's most important to me. I got I gotta let you know that. Did you beat those two teams at the MAC tournament? Yeah, I, you beat them both. Beat you beat both Buffalo. of them. I mean, we we beat beat a lot of you know, yeah. I think so, right? I don't know. Look at the score. I gotta look at the I scores. Beat them. I know you beat them both in a duel, yeah. right? Right. That's well, we huge. Beat Buffalo and Kent in the duel, yeah. You didn't beat Edinburgh in the duel. Yeah. We didn't wrestle. You didn't, okay, we so they weren't in the schedule. So you beat Buffalo. Right. You beat Kent. Who, who were all the MAC wins you guys had? Did you beat SIU. Uh, we beat, uh, uh, George so, Mason. George. Yeah, I was there uh, for that. That was a good duel. Yeah, Bloomsburg. You guys beat Bloomsburg. Um, so you won four and MAC then, duels. And then SIU Edwardsville. So you won five MAC duels. So that's pretty good. Five MAC duels. That's pretty good. Yep. And we were we were close to we were one match away from beating OU. Um, the cool thing is, you know, at the MAC championships, we over overcame a few of those losses that uh, we do that in duel, and then we get to victory. But that was the most um, exciting thing, I guess. We wanted to look at was. Hey, you know, we, we wrestled throughout the year. We wrestled a lot of freshmen. Let's improve on that at the MAC championships. And you could go through probably half the weight classes, and we were beating guys, um, beating guys we lost to. And, we, you know, we have true freshman Logan Heil pinning Luke Warner, who's ranked number eight in the country, number 10 in the country. You know, you don't, a lot of times you don't see true freshmen beating guys that are top 10. Wow. Um, he had a good we, year, man. You know, DeAndre Nassar. DeAndre Nassar, small, small D3 uh, kid, one-time state champ, you know, given uh, Michigan State kid, Kathy. Bl- Bluffton? Yeah, good old Bluffton. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just having those guys being competitive this year, I mean, really helped us. They, it, it didn't matter if they were true freshmen. That's awesome, um, So they'll be, they'll be all back next year. The future's so bright um, for you, and, man, especially with how you guys competed in duels this year. It's crazy. It's crazy how good you guys have gotten under your tenure. Is this, this year two or year three? Second year. Second year. Yep. How long have you been on the staff? Uh, five total. Five total. So three, two yep, is the head man. As is. But as you took over, I guess my point, the jump I've seen since you took over is like amazing. It's like amazing. Like you guys are a different team. Yeah, the first couple of years were a little rough with recruiting and 
you know, obviously just after the program was dropped and the lack of success and some other things, it was, it was a little tough, but uh, we were definitely on the right track looking at our recruiting class from last year that was in the lineup this year. And then our kids were, were bringing in uh, just overall change in the culture and just getting really good, solid kids with character and uh, Ohio kids too, which is, which is great. I mean, I know you want me to recruit more PA kids, Ed, but Dude, I think it for us to build. Can you really argue with this. me? Come on. <laughs> can you argue with me? Stop it. We're trying. We're trying. Look at the state is. Look at the. There's no. Come on, man. You're a PA guy. You know. You know better than I do. Yeah, we got to stay loyal, though. Got to stay loyal to these Ohio kids. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. We're we're, abs we're absolutely gonna continue to to try to pick a couple kids up from PA, and uh, but Ohio kids are. We're going to make our living here, and we understand that. But we're going to we're going to keep working hard, and I think the more success we have, the more eyes we're going to open up, and the more opportunities to recruit those better kids will will happen. Awesome, man! The future's so bright for you guys. It's like I love watching. I love watching you guys compete every duel. Hey, hey, I'm your lucky charm. I show up to a duel, you win. Just so you know. I know. You know that. <laughs> I have to every bring duel I come to, you year. won this year, right? So, all right, hey. I love it. You, oh, we got Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, you're in the you're in the screen. Tommy just jumped in the screen a little bit. So, all right. What's he do? Tommy, oh, hey, he's he's a real piece of work. <laughs> real piece of work. He's too. So, all right, Josh, you got anything else for me? No, no. Uh, uh, I'm sure you'll stay busy over this break, and uh, hopefully, you'll see some more uh, commits coming up in the next week or two that are going to help us uh, get to that next next spot. Awesome, man. Well, hang out a little bit here after this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this live video right here, and then I'll talk to you a little bit afterwards, all right? Sounds good. Thank you. All right, man. Here, let me, let me, let me get rid of this live, and uh, you're the man, Josh. You guys, you, the, Vikes, the Vikes are getting it done, buddy. The Vikes are going to get it done.